It is lovely to be here. This is my second talk on microconf, uh, and I talked to a bunch of you yesterday, and the thing that came up the most in our conversations was, this is such an amazing community, I love it, um, I'm going to be back from microconf next year, so what I want you to do right now is to give a round of applause for yourself. So let's do it. There you go. Perfect. Anyway, um, today we're going to be talking about Facebook ads, naturally, but first I have to take care of an important thing. Um, I saw a tweet from Patrick a couple of days ago, and you've probably seen it on the slides today, on his slides. Mike had his kids on his slides. Uh, the tweet goes, if you can see it, uh, my favorite microconf tradition, family photos on virtually all speaker sites is a nice corrective against the prevailing narrative of you have to be totally committed to the company and crush code with your forehead for your 20s to ever be successful. I totally agree with that. That said, I do not have a traditional family. I'm childless by choice. One of the reasons being I'm just bad parent material. <laughs> Let's just get it out there. Uh, second of all, my mom frequently sends me <laughs> memes like this. She s uh, sent this literally yesterday. Um, so if you can see it on there, I don't know. <laughs> so husband asks, do you ever have the feeling we should have another kid or a kid? Me, I sometimes have a feeling I can do crystal meth, but then I think, mm, better not. <laughs> this is me. <laughs> um, anyway, but I do have a weird family. Um, so this is my cute little dog, Jackie. She's amazing and cute little husband, Yura. He's amazing too. Um, he's somewhere in the audience. I do not know where he is. He's usually, there he is. He's usually, <laughs> he's usually nervous for my talks more than I am. So tra Travis, is it you that you should Just give him, give him a pat and tell him that everything's going to be okay. Okay, that was good. That was good, love that. Um, just a little bit about myself. This is me on Sunday. You can do weird shit in Vegas. <laughs> we, we rented an excavator, and what you can do is, for, like, you rent it for an hour and a half, and they let you dig up holes, and you can, like, put huge tires uh, in a pyramid, and then play basketball, and wave. We literally uh, took an excavator, and we waved at the cars that were driving by and honked the horn. It was awesome. Uh, <laughs> you know where to find me if you want to do the same thing. Um, anyway, I work with seven plus figure companies. I help them develop Facebook ad campaigns, help them run Facebook ad campaigns, um, launch Facebook ad campaigns. Uh, I know it doesn't look from, like that from this picture, but I, I am a professional. Um, Anyway, today we're going to be talking about Facebook ads. If you do want to tweet anything, you can tweet it. You can mention me. You should mention me. I'm at Moitza Mars. I know that, that is a little bit confusing, but that is my maiden name. Pro tip, do not book a hotel room under your maiden name. Uh, they will not let you in. Uh, and if that happens at 3 a.m., it's going to be even harder. And your room will spe smell like raw peeled potatoes. Ask me anything about it later. <laughs> I know everything. Um, today we're going to be talking about Facebook ads, and let's start with a story. So when I first launched, that was years ago, I launched a productized, um, productized service called Super Spicy Sessions. So I did teardowns of social media profiles for my clients. And back then, everyone did mostly B2C Facebook ads. And everyone told me B2B is a bad idea for Facebook ads. Do not do B2B advertising. And I was like, yeah, but I want to give it a try. I was, I was uh, doing Facebook ads back then, uh, back then but not, um, not like today. Uh, I specialize for Facebook uh, ads now. I didn't back in the day. So when I launched Super Spicy Sessions, I decided to do an experiment. What I wanted to have is some sort of an auto semi-automated uh, pipeline. I wanted to get clients automatically through Facebook ads, so not chase them down one by one. And I decided, you know what, let's do Facebook ads for that. And I did it, and the first campaign that I did, I invested 10% of the price of one super spicy session in Facebook ads, and I got a client. Like, the person paid me. Uh, I, I, immediately after that, I got another one, so I asked myself, why isn't everyone doing that? Why is it just me? Why do people say, 
<sighs> Facebook ads, this is just for B2C, e-commerce, don't do it for B2B. Um, and when I, a couple of years later, I asked my audience, why aren't you doing Facebook ads? And these are the reasons that usually came up. So it's too complicated. It's time consuming and takes me hours to launch one campaign and then at the end is ex it's expensive. I just spend a hundred dollars, nothing happens, or a thousand dollars for promoting my business, nothing happens, I get zero results. Overall, um, one of the main points that came across frequently was I don't even know where to start. If you've done Facebook ads before, you know that when you log into Facebook Ads Manager, there's just like a ton of options. Like you, there's objective, different objectives, different targeting options. Like what do you do? So what we're going to do today is we're going to take all of those excuses and we're going to just throw them in the trash can and we are going to work on a strategy that you can implement for your business. You can validate your project, your product with that, or if you work with clients, if you do Facebook ads or any kind of marketing for your clients, you are able to implement that as well. Growing a business and launching a business and getting yourself out there is, is easy as possible nowadays. It hasn't been as easy a couple of years ago where there was no Facebook, no Twitter, no Facebook ads, no Google ads. You had to work really hard to get in front of people. Today, it's just a matter of investing $10 for, a blog, for promoting a blog post and you get in front of people. So you have to take advantage of that technology. So let's talk about why most advertising campaigns fail. I worked and talked to hundreds of clients and customers and my audience who, was, who, who are launching Facebook ad campaigns regularly, and usually these are the reasons that their campaigns fail. So first of all, they try to sell to cold audiences directly. If you try to think of it from a real, t uh, real life perspective. This is like you would go and knock on a door to a stranger and try to sell him or her your $50 ebook. They wouldn't know who you are. Are you really a professional? Do you know what you're doing? Uh, do you have any kind of authority? Do you, uh, do you know what you're saying, what you're teaching? So selling to cold audiences directly is a bad idea. Second of all, usually they want to close the deal too quickly. When I ask people, uh, when we talk about their Facebook ad campaigns, they usually say, yeah, I do retargeting and I invested hundreds of dollars in retargeting and it didn't work. And when we try to dive in deep, we always come to the same conclusion. They did retargeting, but what they did is they retargeted someone who visited their homepage and immediately after they retargeted that person and showed them an ad, for a $50 ebook or for a $100 software or whatever, someone that visits your homepage is not automatically a customer. So you need to talk to them, you need to uh, qualify them. So wanting to, to close the deal too quickly is the second mistake that people usually do. And the third one is optimizing for the wrong metrics. I talked to a lot of you yesterday um, and we were talking about Facebook ads and how you're working with Facebook and how, how's your experience been. And usually um, I know that someone said, yeah, we're, we were trying to get people to download, uh, uh, download our app and we were talking about, okay, so which, uh, which objective did you use when you were trying to launch your Facebook ad campaign? And they said, well, traffic. So if you don't tell Facebook what you want Facebook to do, naturally you won't get the results that you want. So optimizing for the wrong metric is the third most common mistake that people do when launching Facebook ad campaigns. Before we dive into the specifics of launching a Facebook ad campaign, we have to talk about the most important thing and that's about the technology that you need to take, uh, take care of before you launch your first campaign. And that is the Facebook pixel. 
Uh, every one of you probably heard about Facebook Pixel already. If you don't know what it is, it's a snippet of code that you have to implement before the end head tag um, on your web page. Uh, Facebook's instructions are very clear, so if you're interested in learning more about that, you can go into your Facebook Ads Manager. They will let you know everything there is to know about it, but you basically implement it on your web page, and then you're able to track your website visitors and their behavior. So what do they do on your web page? Which blog posts are they visiting? Uh, you can track conversions. You can group people into multiple audiences, people that have read your blog posts, people that have visited your contact page. You can do a lot of things. It takes you two minutes max <laughs> to implement this snippet of code to your web page. So if you don't have that already, you have to do it today. Even if you do not plan on advertising on Facebook in the near future, it would be in your best interest to do that today because when you do decide to run your first advertising, a Facebook advertising campaign, you will already have a lot of data generated and collected through this Facebook pixel, and you would be off to a much better start than without this. So do it today, two minute task. Really, it's absolutely nothing. Before you go to sleep, you got it. Now we can talk about the Facebook advertising funnel that you can implement in the next couple of days when you're going to be flying back to your home country. <clears throat> this is the typical funnel that I implement for most of my clients. It does, um, the, pr the practical examples do deviate a little bit because the more you get to know Facebook ads in your business and how your customers uh, behave, the more detailed this will become, but this is a fantastic foundation. This is the starting point for all of my clients, and I work with seven-figure companies, and we do exactly this. So the, the top of the funnel is attracting visitors. The, uh, the second layer is generating leads, and the third layer is closing sales. And you can imagine this as three separate campaigns. You will have one campaign for attracting visitors, you will have another campaign for generating leads, and you will have the third campaign for closing sales. Uh, today, we are going to be talking about these things as well. So for each of the layers or for each of the campaign, you're going to ask yourself four questions. And these four questions will let you develop this campaign in detail, get to know your target audience a little bit more, and craft the message that you want them to hear. The first question that you're going to ask yourself is, what is the goal of this campaign? What do I want to achieve? The second question is, what is the asset that I want to promote? Third question being, who is the audience that I want to reach? And the fourth question being, what's the approach that I need to take to achieve that goal? Easy way to remember is GAAA, and that stands for Goal, Asset, Audience, and Approach. And let's start with the top of the funnel, attracting visitors. What's the goal of the top of the funnel? The goal is to make the first connection through value. If any, I know that some of you have been to the Growth Edition, and Jordan Gal actually talked exactly about this. When you're reaching out to a cold audience that you eventually you want to sell something to them, you have to make that first connection through value. You need to build trust. You need to establish authority. You need to establish yourself as someone who can talk about that topic professionally. And essentially, our goal is even uh, uh, to tag them with the Facebook pixel so we can con collect those people in a separate audience and retarget them later. The assets that you want to promote at this part is you want to promote valuable blog posts. You want people to walk away with something valuable, something that they can implement, something that will let them see the results by themselves because you will be in a much better position by then. You can also promote video content. Facebook is really strong on video. So if you have video, if you don't have it, just create it. It's very simple. You don't need a professional gear. You can do it with your phone. One of my first, even my videos today are recorded with my phone. So if you have five minutes of your time in a day, 
pick up a phone, hit record, and talk about something valuable and upload that to Facebook. Uh, and video content counts as a great asset at this point as well. If you don't exactly know which blog post would be the best to use at this point, just go to your Google Analytics and see which blog post is the most popular at the moment. That is a good start. If people come to that blog post organically and they stay on the page, they read it through, it does have to mean that it's valuable. They like it. So take that blog post. Don't spend any time writing a new blog post. Just take the most popular one and implement it to your Facebook ad campaign. The audiences that you want to target at this point are cold audiences. So we want the top of the funnel to be scalable. We want to reach as many people as possible. You can use two different approaches at this point. You can use interest targeting. Interest targeting is basically you go into Facebook Ads Manager and you write in interests that uh, your target audience is interested in. There are two approaches that you can take with interest targeting. You can target your competitors. Usually, your competitors have a similar or the same audience that you have. Practical example, John Loomer, love that guy. He's a great Facebook advertising consultant and expert, great articles. So I personally, I have the same target audience that he has. and. John Loomer is an interest that, uh, that's in Facebook Ads Manager, so I can target John Loomer and I will reach his audience. So another thing that you can do with interest targeting is targeting people or companies that are in the similar space that you are and reach the same, uh, the same audience but are not your competitors. Practical example, John Lee Dumas would be one guy. He has a great podcast. Um, his listeners are usually small business owners, so targeting him and targeting his audience would be a good idea for me at that point as well. And the second option that you can take are lookalike audiences. Uh, let's talk about the technicalities just a little bit, what lookalike audiences are. For example, if you have an email list of your existing customers and you want to reach people, brand new audience that is similar to that audience of your existing customers, you would want to use lookalike audiences. What you can do is you can upload the email list of your customers to Facebook and create a lookalike audience. And what Facebook will do is they will analyze the people on your email list. They will match those email to, uh, emails to actual profiles on Facebook. They will analyze those profiles, see what common interests they have, which, uh, what are their demographic information, how old are they usually, which gender, where, do they come, where are they coming from, and then they will create a brand new cold audience called the lookalike audience that is similar to the, uh, the audience of your existing customers. And that audience is usually a great way to start for the top of the funnel, so for advertising blog posts or any kind of other valuable content. And the approach you would want to take is to have a very powerful hand headline and a branded design. If you have a logo that's very distinct, or some colors that you regularly use on your web page, you would want to brand your ad up a little bit and constantly use similar colors and your logo on the visual so people create that connection. And throughout the presentation, I'm going to show you some ads that match this description and this approach so you can get a better sense of how a good Facebook ad should look like. And this is the first one. I don't know if you can see all that. Yeah, you can, okay. So this is an ad that we did for Jonathan Stark. If you're not familiar with him, um, he talks, uh, he practically teaches about value-based pricing, and this was one of the best performing blog posts that he organically had, and we just advertised it on Facebook. Uh, as you can see, if we go back, it has a powerful headline. Jonathan at that point didn't have a, like a branded design and colors that he used, uh, but we did focus on the copy and the communication. Uh, powerful headline, how to get paid 100% upfront. This is interesting. People are interested in that. They, it sparks their interest. And then the copy goes, have you ever tried demanding a 100% upfront payment? 
how did it go? And if you haven't, would you like to? And you got people nodding at this point. Um, I ask for 100% upfront payment all the time, and when I, when I tell people about this, I always get asked, why do I ask for 100% upfront payment? How often do I get away with it? And what do I do when clients push back? And these are the questions that Jonathan was getting from his target audience. So he just repurposed that content for a Facebook ad copy. And then it goes through many years. I learned exactly how to address my prepayment terms in a conversation with clients. If you also want to start billing 100% upfront and don't know how to, or maybe you, you just weren't successful, let me teach you how. Simple, powerful headline. It attracts people's attention, and the ad was really, really successful. When you have the top of the funnel, you want to create your second campaign for lead generation. The goal of this campaign is to get that first transa transaction. It's not a monetary transaction, I know, but still, it is a first transaction. They are giving you their email address, and that counts as qualifying. Basically, what you're doing is you are di uh, dividing people into two separate groups. The first group, they might be interested. They, were, they read your blog post, they know who you are, but maybe they're just lurking from now. On the other hand, you have people who are interested in what you have to offer. They want your content, they want your software. So with lead generation, you separate those, groups, uh, those two groups of people into separate groups, um, and yeah, you have, a, you have a qualifying process. The assets that you would want to promote, lead magnets. So whether that's an ebook, cheat sheet, checklist, email course, free trial, if, if you have a software, free trial is a great, lead magnet or asset to promote at this point. What I do want you to keep in mind is if you are promoting an ebook, cheat sheet, checklist, whatever, it has to be highly valuable. It has to be like a snackable content, something that they can take and they can implement and again see for themselves that this does work. This person or this company, they are an expert in their field. And that is the goal of the asset promotion and lead generation. The audience for the second part of the funnel is a retargeted audience. So you want to promote lead, your lead or your software or free trial to, uh, to your blog post readers. So people that have previously visited the blog post that you promoted on Facebook. Or another thing that you can do in Facebook is advertise to top web page visitors. Basically what you can do is go on Facebook and create a custom audience of people that have spent the most time on your web page. So they probably read your blog post, your whole blog post, they have been on a couple of pages and they have spent a lot of time on there. Or you can target people that visited your contact page. If they visited your contact page, it means that they were actively looking for your content. They're interested in contacting you. Maybe they didn't have time to do that at the moment, but these are the people that you want to target for your lead generation ads. And the approach that you would want to take is, first of all, you want to reiterate pain. I always say that you have to make them hurt. Um, and then you want to communicate a specific outcome. What are they getting from this lead magnet? What is the outcome going to be? At the end, you absolutely need to have a clear and strong call to action. Don't leave it hanging out there. Don't just say, yes, this is what you'll get, and then just leave it at that. Have a clear and strong call to action at the end. Let them know what you want them to do. This is a great example of a good lead generation ad. Why should gaining expert Angular skills be intimidating and time cons consuming? So we're really making them hurt. Learning should make you feel good. It should be fun. And with proper structure, it shouldn't take you days to acquire a new skill. You can now increase your Angular uh, knowledge one bite-sized video at a time. Lessons are concise, most under 10 minutes long. So we are already communicating some sort of an outcome. They are hosted by world's top Angular developers that solve problems in real time, screen sharing every, st uh, every step of the way. Call to action, join the programming elite today by creating your own free account on ekhead.io. 
As you can see, again, the design is branded. Um, if you go on their webpage, they have just beautiful graphics. So we just used one of it uh, for, for our Facebook ads, and it works really well. Uh, at the end, in the headline section of the ad, you can see join Egghead today. So again, a call to action. We didn't just say Egghead is the best. No, we let them know what we want them to do. Another good example with a slightly shorter copy, we reiterated the, okay, but yeah, I have to put it in, in context. This is an ad for time tracking soft, uh, software for construction companies. So now if, you, if any of you have like a, an excuse, my business is not good for Facebook ads, this is, this is an ad for time tracking for construction companies. Their target audience are company, uh, CEOs of construction companies, so very specific. At the beginning of the ad, we reiterated the pain. No more repetitive tasks and handwritten time cards. This, was, this is the number one pain that they get when they, when they use uh, paper time sheets. And then secondly, with Clock Shark, you can focus on the most important work. We are communicating some sort of an outcome. And at the end, see what our customers have to say. We use testimonial at this point. This is a great way to generate leads or to close sales. I'll have another one um, for the third part of the funnel. And then you can see that at the bottom, we have GPS time tracking for mobile workforces and a clear call to action at the bottom. So you can start using Clock Shark for free, designed and created with construction companies in mind. Sign up and let's start saving your money and time today. It is clear they know exactly what to do. At the end, you have sales. And this is, you, you should not miss this part of the funnel. This is what we're here for. We want to close people on Facebook. The goal is, again, to increase profits and to scale your business. If you do the first part of the funnel, if you do the second part of the funnel, scaling your business is not that hard. The assets that we promote at this point are usually tripwire products, so if you are a consultant and you offer $5,000 consulting. You don't want to promote a $5,000 consulting at this point, but you want a tripwire product, such as a uh, productized service, super spicy sessions. That's a good example of a tripwire um, pr uh, productized, uh, productized service. So offer a tripwire product, productized service, or if you do have a software, you should promote your software at this point. Clock Shark, uh, we use, uh, that's the time tracking for construction companies, we use the same exact funnel. So we promote a blog post and we have some good vi video content, then we promote the free trial, and then at the end we promote the actual software. And that's a paid software, they have to pay for it, and it works really, really well. Basically, if you go to any restaurant, you won't get the main course right at the beginning. They will kind of, you know, slowly start you with a starting course, like just a little, something tiny, and then you work your way up to the main course. So don't, like I said, don't offer the $5,000 consulting right away, but start with something smaller and then scale your way up. The audience that you want to target at this point, first of all, existing leads. The leads that they, uh, that's um, the people that signed up for the lead magnet that you previously promoted. You can promote to pricing page visitors. You heard Mike yesterday talking about how you frequently have to follow up with people. It's not that they don't want to reply to you. It's not that they are not interested in your offer. It's just that they forgot. Same, th same thing happens on your landing page. Maybe they have visited your pricing page. Maybe they did want to purchase your software, but for some reason, maybe someone just came and said, you know what, I have this that you need to take care of. Maybe they just didn't have time at that point. Maybe they were on, on an iPhone and they didn't want to conclude that purchase on an iPhone. So you have to retarget those pricing page visitors. Uh, and at the end, if you have a sales page that is, for example, if we're talking about software, you have a sales page that is specifically dedicated to that software, you can retarget those people at this point as well. And the approach that you want to take, when it comes to creative, you have to focus on a specific buyer persona. If your target audience are CEOs of construction companies, talk specifically to them. Don't talk to people in general, but talk to CEOs of construction companies. If your target audience are service business providers, talk specifically to them. 
You have to communicate specific value proposition. What will they get out of it? What is the result of this? And then at the end, you can offer social proof and testimonials, and I have a good example of that as well. First, let's talk about CEO Warrior. This is a coaching company for service business providers. And let's go through the creative right now. So when was the last time you took a vacation or surprised your spouse with some, th something extravagant? If your service business, so we're not just talking if your business, but if your service business is sucking the life out of your life, it's time to make a change. And now we talk about specific value proposition. So find out how one service business owner turned around his failing business and grew it from $1 million to over $30 million. He'll share everything and hand you a customized roadmap to grow your business. We communicate that uh, in the visual as well. And in the headline, Warrior Fast Track Academy, are you brave enough? How long has your service, be uh, ser uh, service business been struggling for? Take the reins back into your hands. We accept only 30 applicants. What we did for this ad is we talked to a lot of customers and to our audience, and we had interviews, and we took their words and just put it in our ad, and it worked. Another one from Egghead, and this is for, uh, this is for the paid pro membership. Uh, we had a special offer, and again, we started with, do you remember those boring eight-hour courses that, courses that you had to sit through if you wanted to learn something new? And everyone goes, yes, I know how it is. 95% of the content is usually not useful at all, but you have to watch it anyway to get to the part that you're interested in. Annoying, right? We know how it is. Your time is valuable. Um, that's why we're dedicated to respecting your time. With Egghead, you can acquire professional knowledge one bite-sized video at a time. Our videos focus on the most important lessons you need to learn. They pack more information in a fraction of the time. No fluff, no wasting time. So if you're a developer that knows how important productivity is, you owe, and everyone knows that, you owe it to yourself to join our Egghead family today. Get access to all videos and sign up for the pro version today. Again, strong, clear call to action at the end. <clears throat> and another one from Clock Shark. Again, we used a testimonial, and this ad converts as crazy. Uh, this copy is a bit of a longer one, but I'll read it through because it's very good and it converts. So let's, f uh, by the way, the number one problem these people have, the target audience, like I said, are paper timesheets. It's just, it, it just take, takes a long time. They are frustrating, they're messy, and people just don't want to use them anymore. So we took their words again and said, let's finally admit it. Paper timesheets are messy and you hate them. And you can see that this, this is a strong language that we're using, but it works. They should, have, they should save you time, help you with organization and proper time tracking. Instead, you end up wasting even more time going through them, trying to make sense of it all. As you can see, we're being really specific at this point. And that's why, because we went out there and talked to our customer, the customers, even if that means that you don't have time, you're a single founder, you have time for only talking to five customers, that's enough to get at least a couple of sentences, a couple of things that they really struggle with and use that same specific language in your ad. They're chaotic, they're time consuming, they're everything you don't need to be wasting your effort on. You need, a, again, we're talking about the value right now, so you need an effective time tracking tool that would help you automatically track your employees and save time on tasks that, that can be taken care of by software. Something that is easy to use, doesn't cost a fortune, and works across all devices though, so that you can check the effectiveness of your team anytime, anywhere. Clockshark will solve all of these problems and then some. And then we talk about specific features, so automate your time tracking, track your team's progress on all devices. So this is important if you're trying to sell, uh, sell a software. Schedule your employees for maximum efficiency, download reports in real time, pay your employees and bill your clients with just a few clicks, thanks to our QuickBooks integration. We talk about the specific cost of the software as well. So, and that and more, all that and more for, from only $25 a month, a minor investment for maximum results. Clear call to action. Get rid of paper time cards today and start using the newest time tracking technology with Clockshark. What we do is we're using technology, um, a testimonial at this point. Why? 
because people love seeing other people's opinions. They don't, like anyone can say, my software is fantastic, my software is the best, anyone can do that, but not anyone has good testimonials. So contact a couple of people, let them know, you know what, I want to grow my business, I'm working really hard, can I use your testimonial? Can I use your picture and promote it with Facebook ads? L to be honest, most, um, uh, yeah, most people that we contacted just said yes. They, they, are, they are willing to support you if you ask them. Basically, the funnel that you're implementing with Facebook ads, it's a qualifying process. You want someone, someone is a stranger at the beginning, and when you offer them value, and when they click on that valuable blog post, when they read that video, uh, when they watch that video that you promote, they become a prospect. Then you offer a lead magnet to them, and you separate people who are not really interested in your product and not really interested in what you do, or maybe it's too early for them, and you separate them from people who are interested, people who are willing to convert, people who want to try your software, and then they become a lead. And when you have a lead, again, you go out there and communicate your product, whether that's an ebook or a consulting gig, or a software, whatever it is. And then they become your customer. I want to end with this. So it's not going to be easy. You're not going to nail your Facebook ads funnel and your first Facebook ad campaign just from the start. When you wrote your first blog post, did it went viral? When you, if you launched a couple of businesses, and when you did, like when you launched your first business, was it amazing? Was it really successful? Did it went viral? It didn't. <laughs> it, it's going to take you a couple of times. You're going to need to go back and reiterate, so don't give up. You have to be determined, as you are determined when you're writing a blog post, when you're writing the 100th blog post that you did, when you're recording your 20th video. You have to be determined with Facebook ads as well. Thank you. All right. Thanks so much, Moitza. We have time for one question right now, and Moitza's going to be uh, here for, uh, for another, we do another workshop, right? Uh, yeah. I think so, yes. Yeah. yeah, so she'll be around, but one question right now, right over here. Yeah, so in your examples, um, I noticed that there's a lot of long copy, and Great Facebook question. will cut that cut that copy off at like two lines. Is it worth um, doing the really long copy? And then also your images that you had, a lot of them had a lot of text mm -hmm. and Facebook always gets grumpy at my mm -hmm. images with text. They're like, this is horrible. You're, yeah, you, know, yeah. you should definitely put less text in your images. What are your opinions on that? Great question. When it comes to long, long copy, I know it sounds weird, but people read it. <laughs> so even if Facebook, you, you know, uh, you said, you know, Facebook cuts it off and then says like show more or something. Uh, people do click on that show more. People do read it. We did hundreds of A-B tests and we A-B tested long form copy versus short form copy. And long for form copy outperformed every single time. It performed way better than short form copy. I don't want to say yes, just do long form copy, but A-B tested. And I can guarantee that long form copy will perform a lot better. And then when it comes to the text on the image, Facebook does have a rule that um, the visual uh, shouldn't have more than, I think it's 20% of text. If it does, you can use more than 20% of text on the image. That said, your reach will be a little bit lower. We, with ClockShark, with testimonials, we do have more than 20% of text on the image. That said, again, this is an A-B test that we've ran. We had the same testimonial, same visual, and we just shrinked the text so it fit, it was less than 20%. And then we used the example that I have, which is more than 20% of text on the image. And even though our reach was lower with uh, a higher quantity of text, our ad performed way better than the one that had less than 20% of text. So again, with testimonials, I found out that even if you surpass 
that threshold, your ad will perform a little bit better. That said, it's not always the case. So again, I would urge you to do an A-B test on that. A-B tests are effective and they're really cheap on Facebook. Um, but yeah, experiment a lot and uh, yeah, you will learn a lot from, from these experiments. All right, let's give Moetza one more hand. Thank you.